So here we are, episode 13, season 2. What's it called, Marty? Brotherly Hate. Wow. This one premiered Groundhog Day, 1982, February 2nd. Where we finally get to meet Henry's estranged brother. Yeah. Bill. Bill Rush, the older brother. He's a little bit older. And they have a long-standing 40-year feud where they haven't spoken to each other in 40 years. This is why April is other people's children. So this week, we find Muriel having what I believe to be lunch. And we find out that Sarah has gone skiing on a skiing trip alone. Mm -hmm. Somehow Henry is like okay with this. Even though that was a major plot twist in an earlier episode, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. A skiing trip? April. April shows up wondering where Henry is. Muriel, Muriel says he's in the attic. We, we don't know what he's doing in the attic. April says that uh, her father is coming to spend uh, the day with her on his way to Hawaii. But he has a little layover time, so they're going to spend the afternoon or the the night together. I don't know where he was going to sleep or if all this happened in one day. This whole episode. Mm -hmm. April thinks that she can re reunite Henry and her father after 40 years. So April goes to pick her dad up at the airport. And for some reason, Monroe... Or this is the next morning, I believe... And for some reason, Monroe's there, messing around, messing around with the, uh, what is it, the garbage disposal. Oh, yeah. Apparently he is uh, m much like a giant pencil sharpener, eating the majority of a broom handle with the garbage disposal. I think it works now. I think it's, it works pretty you know, good. I don't know what happened to that can of tuna that he threw down there, whatever it was. But yeah, look, like oh, it was, was it was. But I threw some sardines in there. Well, that wouldn't do it. But they were still in the can. Wonk, wonk, wonk. And then uh, Mr. Rush proceeded to hit him in the head like eight times. Because that helps. Oh, well, that's what you really. did back in the day. But you could tell he was pissed about it. So then Mrs. Rafkin shows up. Neville Rafkin's sister, who used to <laughs> rent the apartment. Where the girls live. You know it's going to be a good one if, if Miss Rafkin is showing up. She shows up to pick up the box. Yeah, she shows up to pick up the box. The box that's filled with items that look remarkably like items she's picked up in the past. Yeah, there's a, there's a boa. Mate, Neville liked his boas. And some weird uh, undergarments that apparently... Neville Rafkin was storing in the attic, which is somewhere obviously upstairs, but not through the door where Monroe eventually ends up moving into. Mm-hmm. Because they were in the kitchen the whole time talking about Henry being in the attic, and he came in through the kitchen door. So in this box of stuff, there's also a Russian cookbook, which Monroe is very interested in. Mm-hmm. They're looking through it and find a cheesecake recipe that Jackie thinks will be very good. So Monroe goes to look for the special ingredient at a Russian, some Russian store that's somewhere in San Francisco, Old Russia, or Little Russia, or whatever they call it. A Russian shopping supermarket somewhere. Probably not a supermarket, but... All right, so later... All right, so they've made the cheesecake at this point, and they're trying to get him, you know, they're trying to keep Henry from leaving, and he says, I'm going to go buy a paper, and when he goes out the front door, he runs into April and her dad, who I believe we, they, they have told us his name by now, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Muriel slips Bill into the conversation. That's act one. Now, all right, so now Henry is upset and won't tell Muriel why, 
and admits that he can't remember why him and his brother are fighting in the first place. So then they end up sitting on the couch to eat the cheesecake, and all the girls leave. Remember, Sarah is not here at any of this point. I yeah, that matters. Yeah, that is, that is very weird. We'll get into that later. So they all leave, Henry and Bill, sitting on the couch, and Henry tries to get his brother to tell them why they're fighting in the first place, because he can't remember, and discovers that it was all because he flushed Bill's fish down the... He flushed his goldfish down the toilet 40 years ago. Putnam. Putnam, but now they call him Poopsie. Or now Bill calls him Poopsie. That's how he remembers him. And Henry's like, well, that's a, that's a really stupid reason to fight. All right, so now downstairs, where the girls have gone, Rafkin shows up and asks for the cookbook so she can make some of that cheesecake that Monroe was, was had made, made. It's kind of convoluted. And they find out that the special ingredient is to kill mice or rats. And, rat, and apparently she's got uh, mice. Was it rats? Yep. So Rafkin, Mrs. Rafkin, has rats. And then everyone panics because they think that Bill and Henry have eaten the poisonous cheesecake. That's act two. All right, so now the women, they all rush upstairs and stop Henry from eating the cheesecake. They weren't in time to stop April's dad from eating some. So the ladies end up driving him to the hospital where he has his stomach pumped because he won't let Henry take him. So after uh, Bill gets back from the hospital, Monroe stops by. He wants to try the cheesecake and tells him that, tells everybody he was not able to find this special ingredient, which was in fact arsenic. So Henry's all freaked out because uh, he doesn't want his brother to find out that he got his stomach pumped for nothing. And then, but he says all this in front of his brother. And that's the end of the episode. So April's back and totally interloping. Oh yeah, it's all April-centric. Yep. Even though it's kind of Jackie's fault for thinking Cheesecake Miss Shack sounds delicious, even though she has no idea what it is. Miss Shack. She probably thought it was a Russian city, just like... Minsk. Pulling all that hair out of your teeth. It makes sense that we had the long intro with Monroe in the cookbook this week because Monroe made that cheesecake. And then our guest stars this week was Mildred Rafkin, who finally had a scene with April and said it was her worst month. <laughs> I don't think the two of them meet again. I could be wrong. I hope they do. Other guest star, well, that was Bill Rush. Bill Rush, who was his real name, Robert Mandon. Yeah, a classic character sitcom actor from Three's a Crowd. Mm -hmm. Soap. Soap. He's the principal in Zapped. He's the principal in Zapped. So, yeah, everybody, you know who he is. You love him. You've seen him a million times. I almost didn't notice Henry's sweater. It's, a, it's an odd one. STFXU, which is essentially the Canadian St. Francis Xavier University. Monroe wearing stripes? Not really. But April was making up for the lack of Monroe stripes. Who is notably absent? Uh, Sarah. Yeah, you, that's usually not the answer, is it? Very, very odd that she is not in this episode. I was uh, trying to determine where she was, but you noticed it. That another skiing trip. That yeah, that's the first thing I noticed. Six instances of Henry pointing at people. And one of the points gets real close to Bill Rush's face. And then Bill turns his head as if to move from the finger. Two Henry Stammers. And Bill had a stammer as well. It runs in the family. Mm hmm I believe the father did a stammer at some point, didn't he? Oh, Huey, yeah. Huey. I don't think we ever have an episode with all of them in it. That'd be great, April. Just like a big Thanksgiving movie. Oh, yeah. That would have been cool. Speaking of Thanksgiving, this was production number 211. 
which is one week after production number 210, Rafkin's Bum, which was the Thanksgiving episode, but that happened a long time ago. And apparently, the episode that happens after this is Cosmic Cow Puppet being stolen. Oh, shit. So, very strange. And then after that is April and September. Strange. Very strange. April's my worst month. But... <laughs> that's, my new, that's my new catch. My new hashtag. Next week's episode 214, and it's production number 214, so that all kind of goes back to normal. We got the El Camino drive-by transition. Muriel's bump was kind of on display this week. Not not too much. I wonder if Andrew well, would have well, stammered. Well, that's not true because uh, Rafkin... Oh, that, yeah, that one like scene, it really was. Up. But she that was other all... scene, it was barely there. That's true. It's like, oh, she's going to be petting your belly this time. <laughs> you better put on the... we, we got to progress this story. I wonder if Andrew would have had a stammer. We're going to get to those good Andrew episodes where look who's talking now. One's, <laughs> that's going to be good. Henry falls on the couch. Not quite a couch flip, but, you know. Well, Rafkin pushes him. Mm-hmm. And uh, the transvestite storyline rears its head again. Rafkin was a good tenant. Always paid the rent on time. We had a five-note music cue. The old young relationship was there just a little bit with Rafkin and Monroe flirting. Yeah, a call back to an earlier episode. Scale of one to five, I give this a three, but really leaning towards a four. A lot of bizarre bizarreness this time. Oh, I thought it was a solid four. Henry's in the attic. Now, I'm pretty sure that's the first mention of the attic. The attic that will become uh, an important part of the show later, and we'll never see the attic. It's in a whole other part of the house, though. Other odd happenings were Poncho April and Poison Cheesecake. We also got another classic April with the headband and, and Monroe's sweater <laughs> and, and the Yeah, we if there were there were action figures, April would have had the, the most outfits. No, see my my what did we learn is completely wrong. It's completely wrong. Is it? Yeah. This first of all I'm asking where is Sarah? Well we know where Sarah is. But this is a theory that's completely debunked because when we watched it just now, I originally said we learned that when Henry doesn't wear a college sweater, Monroe doesn't wear stripes, at least for this week. That is false because STFXU, the sweater that was hidden when he was carrying in the box from the attic. The box, that is correct. For a second, I thought it was a grocery bag prop, but we haven't seen one of those in a while. Next time, Charlie's last hurrah. Henry's deceitful old friend Charlie wants Henry to help him cheat on his wife. Oh, well, yeah. Next time. Isn't this guy also a cartoonist? An illustrator of sorts? Yeah. You remember what the name of his strip was? Monroe loves it. Oh, no, I don't. Darby. Darby. You created Darby? I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that's a good one. You can hear my show on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. Download the free app today. Listen anytime, anywhere. Create custom playlist. Rate and review my show on Stitcher. And over 4 million car dashboards. On demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcasts. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store.